In this video, I'll show you how to use TinyTap to create a shape puzzle for your PWIM photo study. First, you'll need to take a picture of your photo study with the words shaken out around the outside. I've already gone and done that. Uh, you'll want to make sure that first you don't cut off any words and that your picture is relatively straight. You don't want too crooked a one like this. Uh, you want it fairly straight. Make sure all the words are visible. You're not cutting anything off. If you have a little bit of extra stuff around the top and bottom or around the sides, that's okay. Uh, we can deal with that later, but make sure when you take the picture that you include everything and that it's relatively straight. Once you've taken your picture, you're going to open up the Tiny Tap app. Tap the profile button on the bottom to ensure that you are logged in as yourself. I see that I am. If you don't have an account yet, there is another video that shows you how to download the TinyTap app and create an account. Once you know that you are logged in, tap the create button on the bottom. You may have a few screens here, a few pictures in the center uh, if it's the first time that you've created an app. Just scroll through all of those uh, to get rid of them. Tap on the screen to hide that list of uh, things there and tap the camera button on the bottom palette. Then tap albums, camera roll, and find your picture. Tap on it once it's in there, click cancel. Using two fingers on the screen, Press, hold, and pull them apart and push them together to zoom the picture in and out. And here's where we can do a little bit extra cropping if you have some extra stuff on the top and bottom. What you want to do is try and line it up so that inside of that dotted line, all your words fit. There we go. When you've done that, tap Add Activity. And then Next. Then you're going to tap create or sorry cut a shape puzzle. It gives you the hint that you need to draw a shape. We're going to draw a shape around some of the words. You could do all of the words, but that might get a little bit messy for one game. Uh, I might suggest that you either pick words they're having trouble with or pick words that they have sorted together. That might be an interesting way to choose your words. Let's do the word elephant, draw my shape around it, and I, it's okay. It make, I made sure that I fit everything in there, the entire word. Uh, it's maybe a little bit big, but I think it'll be okay the way it is. Then I'm going to tap the plus sign, and it cuts out that word elephant. And I can move that part, that little shape, anywhere on the screen. There's also a little green pencil. It's a little difficult to see it in the video, but it's right in the top right corner. I'm going to tap that and a dialog box comes up asking me to record. I'm going to tap the record button, say the word, and then tap the stop button. Elephant. And now I can cut out my next one. If I want to hear what it sounds like, I tap the pencil again, press the play button. Elephant. Sounds good to me, so I'm good to go. I'll tap the screen to get rid of that, and I can cut the next word out. Maybe I'll do walking. Tap the plus sign. Tap the edit and record the sound. Walking. Move that one out of the way and maybe I'll do calf as well. Oh, and I don't like the way I cut that. I cut off part of the F. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tap somewhere else on the screen and that shape goes away. Try cutting it out again. Oh, again, I still don't like the way I cut that out. Let's see, there we go. Third time's the charm. 
tap the plus sign, tap the green pencil, record to start recording. Calf. Stop to re stop recording. And then I'm going to rearrange these somewhere on the screen so it's not obvious which one goes where. You might want to do more than three. Three is a pretty small number, but you, of course, you wouldn't want to do all of your words. Once you're done cutting out the ones that you want to use, tap the Done button. And then tap the Done button again. This brings up the screen for naming it and adding a description. I'm going to add the name Elephants Puzzle 1 because I might do several shape puzzles with this photo uh, and different groups of words. In the description uh, you don't have to put anything but I'm going to put the words that I sorted uh, or that I cut out so that was Elephant calf and walking and that'll just help you as a teacher uh, when you were looking at this game uh, and trying to figure out once you have five or six elephant puzzle games made which one you want to use with a group of uh, students uh, that are having particular trouble this is a great reason why you should use your word sorts uh, to choose the words that you're cutting out in each puzzle because that way when you do your assessment you realize that uh, Certain kids are having trouble with certain words You can go to the correct puzzle for those that small group of students uh, You might also want to categorize it as language Age now remember this is age not grade uh, So you'll pick an age approximately equal to your grade level uh, and here the little globe icon refers to public or private. If you tap the globe, it should give you a little description there. It says, leave this switch on to share your app with a tiny tap community. Turn it off to keep it private. So if this is an app that you don't want anyone else to see, slide that switch to off. I would suggest any app that you are creating or any game that you are creating that has a picture of a student in it, you probably definitely want to keep that one private. But in this case, I think it would be great to have it public. Um, that way you're also able to share it with parents, which I will show you how to do in another video. The edit, or the little pencil icon, is whether or not other people can edit your app or your game. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, someone wants to edit this, they're more than welcome to. They may even uh, add another word uh, the, to the puzzle. Once I'm done entering everything, I hit save game and the little grown-ups icon comes up and I have to touch the circle and hold until it goes away. Packs it all up, saves it, and now I can play it. Now if I just tap a shape, nothing happens. But if I tap and move it a little bit, Elephant. It reads the word. And now, as a student, I go, ah, that goes up there. Calf. Uh, if I try and put it down here, first of all, I will see that it doesn't fit. Uh, but also, um, the game shakes it and says, no, that's not where it goes. Calf. Move it up to there. Walking. When I'm all done, I get the little ding. Well done. Says what my percentage is, and with students, I wouldn't want hey them guys, to worry about that. Can you help me to make dinner for this evening's meal? I want it to be very tasty. Uh, sometimes you'll have little ads like that saying, "Hey, I want to. Do you want to play this game next?" And just say no. Go back to the home. And here are all of your games. When you first open up the Tiny Tap app in the future, you'll come to the discovery page that's here. And when you click tap, or sorry, when you click play, 
you'll have all of your games. There may be some extra games that TinyTap has added in here. If you don't want students to see those, simply tap the pencil and tap the red X beside the games you want to delete. And that's creating a shape puzzle out of your photo study.